uh, well, okay. Disturbed, down with the sickness, fell in love with a fever. It's, it's thrice removed. <laughs> thrice removed. <laughs> so yeah, he still likes Disturbed. There she is! Sickness! Get up, come on, get down with the sickness, you fucker, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Masami is the third <laughs> person to come to the podcast. I was napping. Napping? You know that thing where you can't call in, so you have to nap after work? Yeah. Nope, I get it. <laughs> Every time I go to the garage, it's always nap on. <laughs> nap on. That, Apply that directly a, to the forehead. <laughs> that was a sleeping at work while making a snap on garage thing joke. Yep. Nope. I, I, I was picking up what you were putting down, but yeah. I didn't I, I didn't want to be the only one. So yeah, right now, I, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> I get it. I'm not laughing, but I get it. <laughs> 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 I will yep. have to leave a little early, but I am here for a bit. Welcome, then, to stay. No, you uh, die now. I really have to stop taking five minutes to do a half hour's worth of prep. Okay. I could just, you know, I could just, <laughs> I could stop doing other things early. And uh, and get my shit together. But, but why uh, would you do that? That would ruin yeah. a perfectly good streak. Exactly. It's it's no fun. It's less fun. Moreover, I'm yeah no. I'm just I'm just happy that uh, I finally have this setup going, and that Unella is is up and happy again, and that uh, yeah, this other screen just looks so darn good. It's so tasty. It really is. It's nice. I adjusted the, the black balance on it, too, so now it's got some nice contrast. Now it looks really nice. Looks good. Looks juicy. I'm going to put my fingers in it. But it doesn't, have, it doesn't have any holes big enough for human fingers. That's, that's because you're not trying. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. Everything is possible through spite. <laughs> that is a very valid statement. Uh, Wise words of wisdom. Masami, when is your book coming out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I could concentrate long enough to write one, maybe uh, I could give you a date. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd buy it. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> You're good. Hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Okay, so yeah, we're all here. Well, well welcome, fellow Americans. I hope that today we all enjoyed our melted snow coffee and sat beneath uh, advertisements for Dell and Spirons, as we do as Americans. And we sleep in tents. And we sleep in tents, and there are no birds. They will be eaten on Tuesday. <laughs> oh. This is a meme from a video that was posted in general. If you're confused, you can consult the video. Yes, I was I was directed to the video multiple times. Oh boy, but Linus and because I because I I I did not watch the correct video at first, but then I went back and watched the correct video. It's true. Linus and I are now all about the uh, melted snow water coffee homosexual life, as are all Americans. I am led to believe. Thanks, North Korea. <laughs> Proud to be an American. <laughs> they didn't even talk about cars it's not like americans that's something you can legit make fun of americans over we buy tremendously large vehicles because we have tiny penises that's it you can go after that you know you're not going to be 100 percent wrong melted snow water coffee Jesus. Fuck. Yes. Yes. Because I want I want microplastics in my drinks. Yes. Well, because there's snow on the ground 24 seven in America. I guess. <laughs> well. I in know. some parts of the country, I've only, lived here, I've only lived here my entire life. 
<laughs> so yeah. Does anybody know what it's like in Alaska? Uh, very hospitable for about three, four months per year. No. Lots of mosquitoes. Lots of mosquitoes. Hmm. Actually, I think I hear Anchorage is pretty temperate because it's right by the sea. Interesting. I heard a, a very knowledgeable politician informs me that you can see Russia from Anchorage. <laughs> oh, God. No, just from her backyard. Damn. I mean, seriously, though, there's a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> really. I've never been, so I wouldn't know. Like, I've written news reports about them. Oh, God. <laughs> I've also never gone. So if I'm going to Alaska, when should I go and where should I avoid for mosquitoes or skeeters? I don't know. I mean... There's articles about it. <laughs> Just don't go. <laughs> they've got, they, they've got, you know, mosquito season. Avoid mosquito season. Okay. All right. That's but good advice you, for New England too. Or, but or, if you, but if you do go up there during mosquito season, take a net. Yeah, just wear a net. Full body. Yeah, just wear a mosquito net. <laughs> full body net. Sounds like net profit to be had. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Acceptable. Depending on your travel <laughs> arrangements, it, you may not be wrong there. Well, just depends if you want to sting or not. Nah. All right. I can only hit the button so many. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> I can hit the button all I fucking want. Who am I? Goddamn kidding. So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on on the screen, or there was a lot of shit before Zero wiped the map. Yeah. How's yep. Diablo Four going? Blood surge. Uh, it is actually going quite well. I'm enjoying the shit out of it. Especially uh, since they added the malignant, the malignant heart rings. Mm. So. Now I don't have to worry about casting uh, corpse explosion, corpse tendrils or raise skeleton. If I choose to use any of the other abilities other than corpse tendrils. There was, oh, um, cause we didn't, we, we were off last week. We didn't get around to, uh, the Diablo four announcements at BlizzCon. The winners of the wager were Zero and Masami for saying that the Diablo four expansion would be announced and we'd get details on it, but there wouldn't be a launch date. So, oh, uh, Hey, there's no launch date, Awesome. but the D four expansion is coming quote late 2024 and we'll have a brand new class never before seen in the Diablo universe. The prize do we get for being right? Um, I can make your names pink in the server. <laughs> I, that's a cool color. Hey, those are my favorite colors are purple and pink. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious. Given the goddamn <laughs> COC logo. I mean. Oh, man. I, uh, I, I will be honest. I was, I was quite happy with the opening ceremonies for, uh, for BlizzCon. I was. Yeah. For anybody that watched it. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm curious. To hear. It, it, the Diablo announcements were great. Um, I'm impressed with their level of transparency and I am. And I, and I really hate to say this because Omega's already given me shit for it. Um, I, 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 I have injected the needle. I have inserted the Don't needle back it. into my veins. Don't do it. Don't do it zero. I've, I've, I've already done it. I've already done it. Uh, God damn it. Zero. <laughs> um, because Chris Metzen is nothing but an efficient dealer. Um, and, and yes, we got an announcement for the next three WoW expansions. Not one, not two. Three. Um, yeah, he just jumped right back in. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. That that heroin went right into the vein. I mean, just there was no there was no chance. There was no chance. I, it, the game was rigged from the start. Um, but. Uh, the. 
Overwatch announcements. I mean, not that anybody here really plays Overwatch, but they did announce a new tank character, uh, a Samoan. Missed opportunity. He is not voiced by Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Um, so that's a missed opportunity. Um, I think it's a public misconception that Dwayne Johnson knows what's cool. Well, I, no, he, he clearly does not. Now, he did in the 90s, but he no longer does. <laughs> oh, man, you see that? <laughs> his high school, yeah, his high school yearbook photo it is absolutely proof that he, he used to know what was cool. <laughs> Bad haircut, man. Well, you know, we all we, we all suffered through the mullet years for a reason. Hey, no, I'm not knocking it. He looked good for for early 90s. <laughs> so uh, but no, I mean, it was it was Blizz Blizzard and actually Mike Yabara, um came out and said uh, in an interview that he is happy with the Microsoft purchase because based off of all of the conversations he's had with Phil Spencer, that they are going to be given um, more freedom and they aren't going to have to run things up the chain like they did with Activision um, as much as they did with Activision. Mm. So he says that he feels like the studio will get back to its quote unquote independent roots. So oh. I'm interested to see if that happens. Um, I'll believe it when I see it, but I'm, I'm very happy if, if BlizzCon is any indication as to where they're going, I'm very impressed. All right. So did anybody else catch BlizzCon? Cause I, I did not obviously. Yeah. Okay. That's oh, all right. <laughs> I I watched the um bad lip reading of of BlizzCon. <laughs> um that's it. The one that I s s sent Chris Metzen. Oh, uh, For forget what it said, but it was essentially <laughs> Hey guys, I know that it's been a while, but trust me. And I emphatically trust Chris Metzen, which is terrible, but the man did gives, wonders. The man for gives Warcraft. you drugs. Yeah. Yes, the man gives me drugs for free. So, it's I mean, it's <laughs> I mean, you really don't have any choice but to trust him. I mean, when he went away, the good drugs went away and and my my drugs become became cut with fentanyl and it was not good. <laughs> they either get really excellent or they get really bad. Yeah, and and in the case of World of Warcraft, they got really bad. I mean, like unacceptably bad. Oh, Blizzard's been going to that poor emaciated cow for almost twenty years, or is yep, it twenty it, years now? It is. Uh, they are having their twentieth year celebration in November of next year. So, God damn. Well, yeah, fine. There was another uh, article that was posted uh, last week, which is World of Warcraft Classic is getting the devices Cataclysm expansion. Yep. People either loved it or they absolutely hated it. Masami, thoughts? Because <laughs> if I remember correctly, you played that expansion. Was that the last one you played or uh, it was the, like, or was it mom? It was the it was the beginning of the end. Let me put it that way. Yeah, because um, like. I, I remember being really excited for Cataclysm, like when they first proposed it back in the day, it was cool because everyone was really burned out on doing the same fucking quests every time they wanted to do a new alt. So the idea of, you know, having new air of the areas being revamped so things were a little bit different, that was cool. However, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
everyone realized after the expansion went through that no they enjoyed those old quests they wanted them back they couldn't get them back because it literally altered the story of the world in order for them to do that uh, and yeah so that was that was kind of the beginning of the end for me um i i kind of uh, developed this uh zero like habit of like going a long while without playing and then going yeah. back for a few months um, and the water is doing that thing until again. Uh, like, i have the water on full until uh it uh uh basically progressively got to the point where it was years between times i was playing the last expansion i actually touched I believe was Warlords of Draenor because that's the one where you got the fucking little base yep. game, game to yep. yeah that's it that was that was the last one I actually touched because that's where I actually because I missed the entire of the Pandaria one because uh, I was not thrilled about that one but after it was out for a while I went back when I did go back on that that Warlords expansion and I played a little bit of it and it was it was pretty cool. But yeah, <laughs> uh, when I saw that, wow, that the classic was going there, I'm like, no, 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 guys, you just need to keep this at Wrath of the Lich King and just let it exist with the base game, the first two expansions, and that's it. Just, 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 that's it. You don't need to go any further. That was your heyday. But Masami, everybody loves Deathwing. Don't you love Deathwing? Everybody loves Deathwing. I don't know what yes, Deathwing is. I love is. it to death. That yeah, sounds great. <laughs> I don't like, yeah, do you put a little a little Deathwing on my sauce or on my uh, my salad? It sounds like a spicy okay. sauce. Or, oh, it it really does, doesn't or it? Or it could be like the next level of buffalo wings. <laughs> That's it. I'm creating wow inspired hot sauces. Oh my god, doc, this is a million dollar idea. Or a $5 idea. I haven't quite decided yet. Future Leanness, if you could do us a favor, go through the website registry and find out if uh, deathwinghotsauce.com has been taken, and just go ahead and buy that domain. Thank you. I'm sure he'll get right on if, that. If, he'll do, if he does it tomorrow, I'm going to die. I will <laughs> yeah. legit die. <laughs> You're going to get a ping at lunchtime. It's going to be like, <laughs> yep, got it. Yeah, no, no, it's going to be something shitty, like deathwinghotsauce.com net <laughs> <laughs> dot net slash uk yeah dot co dot uk hey kirby what's going on what's up kirby oh shit so all right yeah while we're while we're on the uh subject there was a tabletop rpg announced for diablo 4 um it's going to be called diablo the board game the role-playing day game and uh, it's due out in 2024, and yeah, not not a ton of information on it that I could find. But uh, yeah, See, tabletop that, RPG. You know what's interesting about that is that it it's supposed to coincide with the theoretical release date of the actual physical books for uh, D and D one or whatever the crap they're calling the next version. Yeah, version. It quotes. <laughs> But action combat fight against multiple opponents at once in satisfying fast-paced combat. Experience the mythos of Diablo and its unbridled potential. Potential now in your hands. No, it's, it's always the beginning of the RoboCop theme. Yeah, what's it? Uh, Maggie, do you want to know anything, anything additional about this? No. I know that Zero volunteered to uh, be the game master, so we're good Wait, to go. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. Oh, you did. You Son of a don't, don't, bitch. Nope, totally I didn't did. read your, I didn't read the full statement. Fuck. You need, you need to read. <laughs> you need to read, nope, Zero. you totally volunteered, so. Brain moves too fast, can't trust. So you're gonna, be, you're gonna be the uh, game master. Damn it! And we're gonna play the Diablo RPG. It's official now. It's been said on a podcast. Kirby heard. Yeah. Fuck. 
Well, if Kirby heard me, then I guess I guess I will I will remain a man of my word. Listen, here's the thing. Once the game comes out, we'll get it. We'll look at the rules together as a group. We'll all talk. It's not like, you know, it's all going to be on you to figure all of it out. Like, you know, we're all going to learn how to play the game together. You, you know, but if there is a, a, a role of a game master, you know, thanks for volunteering. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for volunteering. You've been told. Ugh. Oh, I did not realize that I was volunteering. Crap. <laughs> It's okay. So Kirby went to a local pop culture convention on Saturday. Had a great time. Nice. First time. I actually saw this, Kirby, in your, uh, in your Discord status. And it brought a smile to my face. Glad you had a great time. Uh, I spent Saturday cutting hedges, which was not as fun. I work. I work a lot nowadays. Yep. Poor Omega. He works so much. It's only going to get worse. It's a fa- season is at hand. Y- yes. Yeah. Wait till the snow hits. Yeah, it's, it's about to get real bad. Black Friday is a coming. Yeah. Very rough. <laughs> All right. So awesome. let's see. Yeah. Diablo Tabletop RPG. Uh, coming next year. TM. Yeah, I have no idea what it's going to be, but if I'm sure at the very least it will be fun for an evening. You know, it's, it's it might shot. not be... Yeah, you know, I'm not saying that we, we're going to embark on, like, a, a month-long campaign here. I'm saying, like, hey, let's have some fun and fuck around with the you know, this game uh, and see how it goes. Let's fuck around with the tabletop version of a of an ARPG that we all love. The superior ARPG. Future yeah. lateness. <laughs> and Fluffy, just, because I know he listens to this too. Just throw that out there. <laughs> the superior ARPG. This are our dedicated listeners. Hello, future Fluffy and lateness. <laughs> If uh, if there is if the character of Deckard Cain makes an appearance uh, in in there, uh, I'll volunteer to voice him. Yeah, perfect. Things might spiral downhill quickly, <laughs> as, as with, every single game that you play with me does. I was gonna say with Deckard Cain, if it didn't spiral downhill, I would be completely and utterly disappointed. Did Steph just let one rip in the back? Just like burp or rip. <laughs> the background that was great <laughs> yeah that was great yep. i heard it tried to ignore it but couldn't <laughs> there you go that's <laughs> that's how you know you got a keeper all right oh there was there's more new, there's there yeah there's a ton of news so five years after trying for a valve counter-strike moment with fortnite epic game store still isn't turning a profit surprise surprise we all do this I just want to say how proud I am to have never paid for anything on the Epic Game Store and have yet uh, amassed a library of hundreds of free games, which they pay for, apparently. Yeah, has anyone here ever financially supported Epic? <laughs> no. Uh, no, yeah. no, nah, yeah. absolutely not. We all have game libraries on the Epic Store, but we've never actually bought games on the Epic Store. We're what's wrong with gaming. Sure. <laughs> yes, it's us. It's us, the gamers who take advantage of a system who, in, in which, you know, they set it up to be that way. Yes, it's our problem. Hey, they offer a bunch of free games. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Who are we to not partake? It was probably three. Oh, uh, wait, no. There are dates in this article. Hold on a second. Also, in 2021, the next one for $4 billion. So it was 2021, probably, when we covered the story about how uh, Epic, Epic's game division was running in the red, and they had expected that they would be for quite some time. So, yeah. This is just a courteous reminder that 
Epic has no expectation of profit until 2027, according to this article. Uh, so yeah, they're they're running and they're playing the long game with this store, and they're. I guess they're expecting. I don't know how they're expecting to turn this around and make a profit on their current path, but I don't have a lot of graphs in front of me either. So yeah. maybe they're slowly digging themselves out. But that's fine. Keep on giving us free games. I will keep on planning to play those free games later. Okay. The only one that I've ever played that I got off of the Epic Store was um, GTA. And that was literally because you guys screamed at me when it went free and were like, you have to get this game so that we can do shenanigans. And then we did for a while and now we don't do shenanigans anymore. Yeah, wait, you want to install GTA? I still got GTA installed. I did uninstall GTA. It was That's, taking up a lot of space on my hard drive. <laughs> it is actually the largest game that I have installed, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, that's one that I never I never uninstall that one because I'm ready at a moment's notice to go and just murder NPCs in brutal and violent ways. Uh, yeah, we need so. we need to do that again soon. Oh, Omega and I had played uh we played what was the cooking one? Um Overcooked. Overcooked, yeah. So Omega and I have played some co-op games on Epic. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten probably a good half dozen to a dozen different games that I've, you know, put some amount of time into. Whether or not, you know, it was a ton of time. But, you know, I've gotten a decent amount of fun out of the free games on Epic. I, mean, I can pull up my... Uh, my library real quick and list off the titles that I've put some time into. Hey, yeah, why not? Oh, uh, Death Stranding, for one thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because that, that was a freebie. I have put a lot of time into that. Um, oh, I installed a Warhammer. Warhammer Gladiator. Relics of War. Haven't played that yet, though. Yeah, that's the one that's related to the... Uh, what was the free demo that you are playing uh, the other day? Uh, it was Civ in a different skin. Oh, right. Um, Zephon. Yes, that one. Uh, Warhammer Gladius is the same developer. Right, right. Uh, yeah, Off-World Trading Company I play. That's a fun base economic um they released uh they, they did the remastered bioshocks i played through those again that was fun after all that time oh yeah overcome again uh i put probably 20 to 50 hours into metro last light um oh i put a bunch of time into crying sons that was a really fun roguelike oh, you guys remember me playing stranded deep i was into that for a long time uh Oh, that's Sludge right. life. Uh, wait, Sludge. I have I have stranded deep on yeah I have stranded deep on Steam and you have it on Epic. That's how we were playing that. Yep. Yeah, I got it for free, and uh, it was great. Uh, unfortunately, the multiplayer was not for stable. Once we started building ridiculous things, which is what we try to do in any game that we play together, where we are capable of building things, we build ridiculous things. And it breaks the game. Well, um, we, yeah, we got to the point where we had an option. We could have just abandoned that island that we built because it seems like it seems like we never have any problems when we're just stable on an island running around. But as soon as we take a boat out and we go to different islands and shit, that's when DC and desync happen all the goddamn time. So <laughs> we were trying to make our boat smaller to deal with that horse shit. Yeah, it's a shame. Like. One of the coolest things is like, hey, we fucking built this awesome boat. Look at this. I mean, same problem that we had in Space Engineers. Yeah. Look at this insane ship that constructed, and the game is now at 14 <laughs> FPS and lag spikes and desyncs. <laughs> one of one of my cherished memories 
of Space Engineers is from our last playthrough together when we, we had the ship. We just started off with the, the survivor ship and we built onto it. And I was in the middle of constructing what would be a massive array of solar panels on rotors that I was just going to make a circle. I, I was gonna, I, it's difficult to describe it. I was gonna turn this big straight line of solar panels on rotors or on hinges into a circle that wrapped from the bottom of our ship up to the top of our ship. I was in the middle of doing this and calculating out and all this, uh, just Omega over, over comms was like looking at what I was doing. He's just like, you are such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. So I am such an asshole for making the game try and do this shit. But like, yeah, you and I have made that game do a lot of things. Not one. We made a drill press that drilled into the planet, like a, a, a yeah, into the moon, two hundred foot tall drill press that yeah, with an drilled, expanding with an expanding drill bits. It. it Drilled a dome-shaped cavern in the moon, coming out of a crater. It was it was our fucking underground moon base in a crater, and it had a fucking mechanical door that closed over it and shit. It was the coolest fucking moon base that ever existed, and the game hated every minute of us building it, well, okay. digging it. Because yeah. we designed a a drill that would drill downward about two hundred, and as it drilled downwards, it would also expand outwards at a timed rate, and it would drill out an ever expanding cavern just out of the mouth of this little crater. Yeah. And uh yeah, we had an entire base in there. We had multiple ships and of course one giant ship exactly the size of the entrance that oh, could yeah, launch yeah. out of it. It was pretty yeah. fucking epic. That was that was probably our coolest base. I think a close second <laughs> would be uh the one where we drilled all the way through an entire mountain. Oh yeah, because we need well, yeah. We both wanted to have a mountainside base that we could look out and have an excellent view, but we also wanted to power it with uh, solar towers, moving solar towers that would rotate to, to keep the sun on them. So the option was to have a whole bunch of solar, t uh, solar towers just sticking out of a mountain or drill through the mountain uh, opposite of the windows that we had built and reach a sort of flat space with grass and, and foliage where we could make our solar arrays. And uh, that, that plan won out. That was not fun. long after we, the, not long after that save file pretty much collapsed under its own weight. Yeah, our, we... goal at that, our goal in that playthrough was to build a base on every celestial body every planet yeah and at that point we had left so oh you remember uh uh wilfred brimley the mining uh the, the the strip miner on mars that was i do great. yeah that was our, our mars base uh that we started off on and did that and then we we used wilfred brimley and um i forget the ship that i named after the uh the french director who directed from earth to the moon um took that ship to the ice moon of Mars, and that's where we built the space elevator. And took the space elevator, built Lady Smith Black Mombaza, took her to Earth, built the Earth base, uh, took something... Oh, no, because at that point you had built Flint and the dropship. What have you named... What did you name the dropship? I don't remember. Shit. But yeah, you had built those, so we had like a way to land ourselves on planets and, and take uh, take cargo up and down, move shit around fairly easily. And that's when we went to the moon, and we built that ball or moon base. And in retrospect, what really turned our game into mashed potatoes was that we had scripts running at all those bases, and we didn't we didn't stop the scripts when we left. So solar well, it's, panels it's... on all our bases were, were turning while we were away, and they didn't need to. It's worse than that, though. We also had scripts on every single ship 
that we had down to the smallest little drone. They were running grip. Like, yeah. it really fucked with the game. Hard. <laughs> yeah, it did. I remember what, what really, uh, where we stopped was when I built uh, Wagner, the jump ship. And uh, that, was, that was as simple and elegant a design as I could have made uh, for something that had like 50 jump drives on it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, well uh, exactly the kind of over the top that the game didn't like it. Look, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I want to jump from one planet to another. I don't want to make 10 sequential jumps. So, 50 jump drives it is. Yeah. And he also okay. played a lot of Dungeons 3. Oh, yeah. That's my epic collection. All of them free. So I'm glad to have contributed to their financial difficulties. <laughs> Oh, uh, before we get too far away from uh, from Blizzard, uh, Samwise Dieter, who helped build Diablo's signature art style, or who helped build Blizzard's signature art style, excuse me, is retiring after more than thirty years of the company. So I think he's the last. He's the last uh, artist that joined when the company started. It's a sad day. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I mean, yeah, all things come to an end in their time, so... End of an era. You congrats know. to him on a great career. Uh, and, yeah, we should all thank him for what is, at this point, decades of, you know, great art. Great, yeah. you know, design. Great uh, fucking things to look at. For all the... Uh, Shit that we may have said about Blizzard over the years. Uh, no one ever said that shit wasn't beautiful. So, they congrats to him on a good career. Hope he's uh, lucky in whatever the fuck he does. He was around for all the, the golden oldies. Uh, Warcraft, orcs, and humans. Oh. <laughs> Nobody remembers that title anymore. First Warcraft game. And then I Diablo do, Starcraft. I own that shit. Oh yeah, me too. Shit. Yep, still right behind me. Big stack of old Blizzard games on CD. I actually went to... I forget what site it was. Um, I went to some site and downloaded like all of the original Warcraft games. Nice. <laughs> Got them for like, I think it was like thirty bucks for all of them. Oh yeah, they they. I think Blizzard still sells the the Warcraft chest, the War chest, or something they call it. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Still excellent games. All right. Da, 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 da. Oh, some residual shit coming off of the, um, well, some tangential shit related to the voice, or the actor strike. Uh, the article from GamesWriter is, uh, voice actor sitting out at Microsoft's AI decision. Quote, if you want to start a voice acting career, don't bother. Because Microsoft's recent announcement made the industry's future look bleak for voice actors. Uh, if anybody wants to jump in here, uh, it's basically that uh, on the 6th of November, Microsoft announced that it partnered with uh, InWorld AI to develop an AI tool set for its studios that will empower creators in dialogue, story, and quest design. So, dialogue, right there. Or you're not just uh, developing uh, dialogue for characters, you have the ability to speak the dialogue as well. That's rightfully pissed off some voice actors. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a shame that some of the first and earliest victims to AI are creative. Yeah. Why, why is AI not being to... And 
monotonous, repetitive, you know, that sort of task. You know, the the worst kind of jobs. Why is it eliminating creative? Well, because creative people are annoying. They can't work on schedules. You know, they claim that you can't force creativity. You know, they're just a bunch of drama queens. <coughs> I'm, uh, of course, being sarcastic as a mm -hmm. person with a fucking uh, fine arts degree myself. <laughs> um, yeah. The, well, I mean... It's because everybody's looking for ways to cut costs and cut measures, and artists are, you know, talented people who have a point when they want, you know, a raise. Especially after they've been doing something for years, and they're considered an integral part of a property or a title. But really, I mean, if you're looking for the most cost-effective strategy for implementing AI, then you take a look at the people who cost the company the most money and see how you can automate their jobs, which means directors and administrators. But, you know, that's never going to happen. I was going to say, yeah, no, that that's definitely... That's like wishing in one hand and shitting in the other and seeing which one fills up first. So, you know, if you're if you're executive director of, you know, some studio and uh, you're the one who's costing the company, you know, six million dollars a paycheck then uh, wow. replace that kid with ai <laughs> yeah but nobody wants to work for machines no i i refuse to give answering machines my name that's how much i hate them that's an old ass futurama joke <laughs> uh i don't know i'm not sure where this will go or if uh any of the the creatives or voice actors have uh, any options to, to fight back against Microsoft against this decision, or if this is purely going to come down to uh, pressure from us, the consumer. Uh, but as it stands right now in this article, I picture Microsoft just plowing forward with this and saying that anybody who doesn't like it is an enemy of progress. Or, uh, rabble, rabble, rabble. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there will be a follow-up on this, except for <laughs> when Microsoft lays off their last voice actor. But if there is, we will cover it. Thanks for the article. Hope. The VGA Awards are this week. Oh, yeah. Thursday night. Yeah. The uh, VGA Awards and the Golden Joystick Awards. Well, the Golden Joysticks have already happened. Yep. And Larian swept it, baby. I, I posted that picture of the uh, the game director for Baldur's Gate holding all those Golden Joysticks. Yeah. Good. You know what, though? I'm glad. And yeah. I because I, I sure shit know they're not going to they're not going to catch that much at the video game awards because the video game awards are not fan voted for. Oh no. Yeah. Those are powered by AAA studios. So you're not going to see Larry and get much in the way of a major awards on that. I'd say I'm not, I'm not going to go the road of saying that Diablo four is a bad game. Uh, it didn't, didn't live up to you know what I was hoping it to be, but it's not bad. But still, I don't think it holds a candle next to Baldur's Gate if you're going for like game of the year. But Diablo Four is a strong contender. Um, who's the other one? Oh, Starfield, obviously. It's going to be a big container at the video game awards. But we shall see. If Starfield wins anything at all, I will lose faith in the gaming industry. <laughs> right, now? You had faith? Yeah. You still well, have I mean, faith? I had a little bit of faith. I mean, it's, I no, that's fair. Faith. 
Right. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I mean. Well, I guess it would be with, nice. Let's we'll go with George Michael over uh, Fred Harris, <laughs> but <laughs> but. Yeah, it's fair to say that there's still a little hope in the gaming industry because Laren did come out with a fucking phenomenal game and uh, won some awards at the at the fan award. Uh, 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 golden joysticks. So yeah, you know there's still good devs out there, and the indie development world is doing pretty phenomenally. Still talented creatives out there. Doing hard work, making good games. I'm just, I'm, I'm just happy that Asterian's uh, voice actor oh, yeah. won, won the award because that man is fucking brilliant. In one of his interviews, they ask him, "Has anything from Asterian's personality, personality, actually crept into your real life?" And he said that the nervous laugh that Asterian does has crept in and he actually does it in real life now. <laughs> I can see that. I still like, I like, um, Gustarian. Yeah. I still get a giggle out of that. Honk. Honk. Is this your sandwich? Not anymore. Not, not anymore. Honk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. So yeah, Baldur's Gate. Uh, one, I wonder if they list in here. Uh, it won Game of the Year. The Asterian voice actor got it for uh, Best Supporting Character. Um, oh, Ultimate Game of the Year and PC Game of the Year. Uh, it secured its uh, community prize. Uh, it, it also got a Storytelling Award, Visual Design Award. And Laren Studio got Studio of the Year. And Neil Newborn for Asteria and got Best Supporting Performer. There you go. So yeah, well-deserved. Well-deserved. Fun game. A little silly. Sometimes frustrating. What I'm really impressed with is that uh, somehow, uh, with me playing the game in the bass backwards way that I like doing questing and everything, somehow they managed to design a game that I could not break story-wise. <laughs> and I only found, there was only uh, one spot where one of the characters got a dialogue bubble above his head. And no matter how much or when or where I went to talk to him, he had nothing to say to me. There's this bubble here. And it was just, uh, it was a glitch. I had to take him back to one area, just walk into it, walk out of it, and the bubble was gone. So that's the only, like, story-esque thing that got kind of broke. That and, um... But it was an easy fix. G Gale being a little... forward. Yeah, Gale's a sex pest. Uh -huh. and depending on how you talk to Will, Will can become a sex pest, too. But at least he's a gentleman about it. Gale's just like, hey, I want to hump your leg. For my evil playthrough, I should just go as the most obnoxiously ugly character that I can possibly come up with and have Gale fawn over me as if I'm, like, the best thing since drawn butter. It's like, ooh, <laughs> there's something about the scabies on your temple that just turns me on. I still say that we should all, like, the four of us should get together and, and play a game and work our way through it like a D and D campaign and just, and it just be absolutely obnoxious with it. <laughs> obnoxious. How? Oh, there are ways like, have you seen the video of the, uh, four gnomes of chaos? I have not. Um, the, they, it was four gnome barbarians that just literally went around the entire starting area and picked up all of the barrels of, um, Oh, the fire, the explosive barrels. Yeah. And then took them to the goblin camp and just spread them all out and then proceeded to have one person stand up and 
shoot a fire arrow at one and blew the entire camp up and I, I proceeded to that. crash the game twice. Yeah, I appreciate that. You can <laughs> oh, man. crash the game for real. Oh, yes. I've only set off like four or five fire barrels at a time. I set off 13 and it dropped my I set off 13 in a row, just straight in a row. And it dropped my FPS from 60 from 60 down to 12 while they were blowing damn. up. God damn. It was actually quite impressive. You know, we need, uh, I, is there a merchant in this? I don't, I haven't been paying attention, but now you're making me think about it. There's a merchant in that game that sells blasting powder every time they reload or every time their inventory recycles. Yeah. Just buy as much blasting powder as humanly possible. Drop it down everywhere preemptively right before a fight. That's a good that idea. Sounds like a blast. Hey. Uh, hey. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. It's a great game. Well-deserved awards. Congratulations, Larian Studios. Uh, and we're done with that, and we're done with that, and we're done with that, and... Oh! We finally have... We have another This Week in Twitter. Thank you. Uh, uh, uh. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. This mouse is terrible. Me? It was probably you. It was you. Thank you, Omega, for posting our first article in three weeks about this week in Twitter. Uh, so, Sony is disabling Twitter integration on PlayStation consoles uh, this week. This is supposed to be the sixth. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a picture of Elon looking not so amused. Look at him. Look at his eyes. He's th He's wishing that he was on Mars right now. I wish I was on another planet. I'm no big Elon fan, but I saw that one and I'm like, oh yeah, we can definitely talk about his failure. <laughs> so I, I love I love how the great X spiral continued as Sony revealed on its support site that integration with social media platform formerly known as Twitter, because it's not X, it's the platform formerly known as Twitter. Will be disabled on PS4. It's taking the Prince of Prots. Yes, it is. Welcome back, Kirby. As of November 13th, there's no more integration, formerly known as Twitter, uh, on PS5 and PS4 consoles. So uh, Sony says that their decision to drop uh, comes several months after Microsoft also opted to disable uploads to the platform from Xbox and the Windows Game Bar. And Blizzard, obviously, we talked about removed Twitter integration from WoW. Uh, earlier this year. Jeez, February? It's been that long. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. The first, the, the, the latter two, Microsoft and Activision, their decision was spurred on by the monetization of the Twitter API. Uh, at least that's the, the most common explanation for it. I don't know if there's been an official statement. But, uh, yeah, it just happened to take place around the time that Twitter decided to monetize their API. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Elon. Well, he did it to himself. Of I mean, I, I would be sorry if he hadn't done the shit to himself. I wouldn't. I, I, I have no sympathy for the man. I haven't for about ten years now. <laughs> yeah, well, I would. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. He's, we also, didn't we talk, or somebody posted an article, maybe we didn't get to it on podcast, about how Twitter is worth like a third of what it is, of what it was when it was purchased. Yeah, it's something like, it, uh, like 14, it, it, he bought it at what, 44 billion, and it was valued at 14. Yeah, he bought it at 44 Jesus. Yeah. Oh, well, another great article from Andy Chalk. But yeah. Next week in Twitter, who else will drop uh, support for it on their platform? 
God, who's left? Steam Deck? Mm -hmm. Mother of God. Omega, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Omega's no, back into uh, Kerbal. I love it. The question is, where will the rocket go to? Uh -oh. I just need to orbit. <laughs> ah, yes. The orbit. I'm actually going to turn the volume up because I really like the soundtrack on Kerbal. It's very relaxing. What happens once it goes into orbit, it comes down. You know, down. The hit sequel to the movie Up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the high point in that movie is when there's a breakup. It's a toxic relationship where nobody's happy and they break up and then everybody's happy. Right. There, that's the opposite of Up. <laughs> Oh, so I've been, uh, I occasionally catch things that, that pique my interest and the, um, the Disney Pixar movie Inside Out, where they had like the little emotions, um, they're coming out with the second one and the new emotion for the second one is anxiety. And I was Great. like, why Why was anxiety not in, in the first one? I have not. I have, I actually haven't seen the first one, which is a surprise, because I usually like Pixar movies. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty good. Um, oh, how I'm many emotions? Four. Four or five. Okay. Lewis Black plays anger. To nobody's surprise. Wait, is that the one where uh, the Phyllis from The Office voices sadness? I believe so, yes. Okay, I may have seen that, actually. Yeah, well, well okay, fine, because they were dealing with base emotions. So you have joy, you have sadness, you have fear, and you have anger. That's That makes sense. Anxiety is like just a different type of fear mixed in with sadness. Jesus fucking Christ. You ever have that thing where you're just sitting at your desk minding your own business and it feels like something's crawling on you and you go to look and there's nothing there? And so you look away and then you feel it again? Yep. What is this? I've not had my fix today. I have ants crawling on me or some shit. <laughs> forgot to, you forgot to drop your daily dose of acid <laughs> I forgot to yeah insert heroin into me god I lost a lot of time in Kerbal alright GG's Kirby good luck going to bed early oh it's already 10 wow. yeah this this one much faster than my brain was letting on. Oh, so let's see. I finished watching Berserk. Uh, really, really excellent fucked up show. And what else did I move on to? Oh, Goblin Slayer. I, I watched Goblin Slayer th this past week. And uh, it's... <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a silly show. Equally fucked up. Um, but yeah, Goblin Slayer is a fun one. And now everybody has been telling me for years that I should watch Attack on Titan, so I'm going to start watching Attack on Titan. Why not? See what all that fuss is about. And Zero, I found you some Full Metal Alchemist. Wait. It's even dual audio. So you can listen to dual it audio? You can listen to it in the original Japanese with subtitles if you want to, or if you're feeling lazy, you can switch over to the English dub. I am not one of those people who thinks that the English dub just automatically sucks. That's not usually, that's not always the case. Yeah, no, I actually enjoyed the English dub because the people who voiced um, Edward and Alphonse were actually really good. I don't know who those people are, but I believe you. 
Uh, Vic Magnana and... Oh, God, who did um, Alphonse? Alphonse. I can't remember, but... Um, what a great name. I think my favorite joke out of that whole thing, and I sent it to my sister, and she immediately said, I'm disowning you, um, was a picture of Alphonse, and it said, Sweet armor, bro. I bet it cost you an arm and a leg. I feel like I wow. feel like that'll be funny to me when I watch the when I watch the thing. You yeah. will. You, you will. will. Yep. Yeah. That and you'll find out why the the little girl and her dog are inseparable. Oh, okay. You, that sounds sweet. <laughs> Sami's gonna come to Virginia just to kick me in the nuts for that one. I can find him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, I currently have a. I'm currently nursing a hernia, so they are not hard to find. Yeah, Zero and I have the same thing going on. We're the massive balls. Itty bitty dick. <laughs> Too soon? Not soon nope. enough. <laughs> uh, nope, been dealing with this for over a decade. It's funny now. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this discussion already, Doc. Once you hit the 10 year mark, it's funny. An acorn on a nest of twigs and underneath two fetal pigs. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. Wait, so what was I gonna you reminded me of something. Before before Masami was talking about your testicles. <laughs> of course I'm gonna forget it. Oh uh English dubs. Uh yes. People say that English dubs are bad. Uh, I beg to differ. I've watched Cowboy Bebop through at least a dozen times. Heard it in the original Japanese and in the English dub. Both are great. English dub of Cowboy Bebop's pretty pretty fucking sick, actually. I think the the best English dub that I have found um, was Soul Eater. Oh, I never got. I'm, I'll add that one to the list. I've never seen that, but I've heard it. It is. It is actually pretty good. I I thoroughly enjoy it because it's one of those ones that, at times, is extremely serious, um, but most of the time doesn't take itself too seriously. Oh boy! Oh boy! We ha we have and a launch in Kerbal. And do not, do not watch no! Soul... Oh, no! No, the rocket's supposed to go up. <laughs> um, do not watch the the sequel to Soul Eater, which is Soul Eater Not, um, because it is awful. All right, noted. Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. I do the same thing. Um. That was a simulation. This game has like 90% simulation flights, and uh, the rest of them are totally legit. Are you freehanding this, Omega? Hey, what do you mean? Are you, do you have a nav computer uh, doing guidance for you, or are you actually steering the ship yourself? I'm steering it. All right, good on you. Oh, she's a fighter. She's a fighter. <laughs> Get after it. Oh, you got Bob, Kerman. Oh, I miss Jebediah. Jeb already went on a mission. He's one off. He's in the pilot's lounge. Yep, yeah. I swear. Valentina is so happy. I swear that I have seen Jedi eat or drink so much goddamn acetone. Uh, Whoa! No. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yep, yeah, that 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 separation just completely flubbed. 
saw the rocket was like, time to well, go down now? <laughs> so my current mission is to get into orbit. Yeah. I don't I don't think but I, I currently have a eighteen ton vessel mass limit. I don't think I can send Kerbals to orbit just eighteen tons. This is about as much fuel as I can get on under eight tons. So you're doing unmanned flight? I mean you I just RC. do the smaller one. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, you can do some more. Yeah, sure. But for the results of that test flight, we'll have to wait until next week. So, GG's, everybody. Thank you for coming along. Thank you, Kirby, for talking in the chat. But yeah, we'll see everybody same time, same place next week. Penis, penis, fuck Winnie the Pooh, who is due in California this week. Wait, what? Fuck him. Uh, Winnie the Pooh is coming to California. He's coming to San Francisco to sit down with Grandpa Joe and talk That's about right. how neither of them are going to do anything to solve any of the current problems. No. That's right, because they solved the San Francisco homeless problem overnight. Yeah, that's been trending a lot. <laughs> a lot of sites. It's just like, isn't this fucking bullshit that we know the government can clean this place up? They just willfully choose not to. <laughs> So yeah, fuck Winnie the Pooh, uh, fuck Putin, fuck Elon, fuck Nestle, and Linus Tech Tips. Penis, penis.